What we focus on from a biblical worldview is not just their success, but who are they becoming? Primarily, what is uh, their growth in virtue like? What's their growth in their character? And this is where prayer uh, can be very helpful. Welcome back to the Maven Parent Podcast. You know, one of the partnerships that we have at Maven is with the Colson Center for Christian Worldview. And at Colson Center, actually, I get to do a podcast with a friend of mine, Sarah Stone Street, called the Strong Women Podcast. And so we just love the Colson Center. We love what they're doing. They're a worldview thinking organization like Maven. So, of course, a lot of things we do are similar, such as you and John Stone Street, who's the president of Colton Center, wrote A Practical Guide to Culture and then wrote The Student's Guide to Culture. Um, And I guess the the wives were jealous of the partnership that John and I had (laughs) and said, we're going to try to one up you and do a podcast and And call it Strong Women. And we did one up you. We blew you out of the water. (laughs) It Um, is a, I have to admit, (laughs) it is a a podcast that has just taken off. (laughs) And it's, I mean, you guys are getting 30, 40,000 downloads a month because you guys tell such great stories that really help display the beauty of, of God's design for women. And it is something, I mean, you have gotten a lot of feedback from men who listen to this. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually been a really encouraging part too. Cause I think when you're talking about one of the two genders, it's, it's easy to talk about the other one and maybe sometimes in a disparaging way. But one of mine and Sarah's goals was to, as we're looking at God's design for women, that it would also lift up God's design for men. And that is definitely the feedback we've gotten. So that's encouraging to hear. But so Colson Center invited you and I to come on and do a devotional there this month, uh, looking at the theme of prayer. And they have prayer guides that you can download. And so they invited us to come on and talk about prayer, particularly as a parent. Yeah. And, you know, so obviously our podcast, the Maven podcast, is really looking at, hey, what's the Christian worldview and the implications of the Christian worldview when it comes to parenting our kids? And Obviously, the Christian worldview would say prayer is absolutely vital to that. And uh, I I think, I I know if I'm going to be honest, and I think a lot of us probably, if we're honest, we don't pray enough for our kids. Uh, It's it's a lot of, hey, what can I do? What can I control? (laughs) And uh, all right, what are the steps I need to take? Because I got to address this particular issue. And of course, we need to do those things as well. But often prayer can be pushed off to the side Mm -hmm. and or we don't even really maybe believe in the power of prayer or we just think a lot more is dependent on us. Or we don't know what enough is. You say you said you don't pray enough. And I'm thinking when especially when it comes to the kids, I I don't know if I'd ever feel like, oh, I prayed enough for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just because of our just love and devotion and you're so loyalty invested. to our children. Yeah, you're so invested that it, when when would we pray enough? And and so yeah, it's a it's a, something good to think about though. Yeah, but and the main point is that we don't pray enough. And so we want to mm-hmm. we want to encourage parents out there to to pray. Mm-hmm. But it's not enough to say you need to pray. And so we got a chance to do this devotional for the Colson Center that we want to share with you guys uh, because we, we, we try to walk through prayer uh, a little more carefully and put it in the context of the larger Christian worldview. And in doing so, help motivate you and I to pray more for our kids. Uh, we've got to have all the big important conversations. We've got to, you know, parent to the best of our abilities. We've got to, you know, proclaim the gospel to our kids and help them in their sanctification. But first and foremost, all of this stuff is a work of God's spirit 
And he may use us, he may not, <laughs> but we need to be praying first that his spirit would work in our kids. And so we think this devotional will be helpful for you, be encouragement for you, as it, it was for us just putting it together, uh, and encourage you and I to, to pray regularly, persistently, consistently for our kids. Hey, everybody, welcome to another Colson Center time of guided prayer, uh, part of this Pray With Me campaign. Really excited to have all of you with us uh, and continue this conversation every week uh, of Lent, uh, which lasts between now and uh, Easter week. Uh, each week, I want to open up with a prayer. Uh, I always struggle. some. Well, I, a lot of times I struggle to know what to say in prayer, particularly with all the stuff going on in our world. And I find um, that uh, the... The saints that have gone before us sometimes knew how to put some things into words. And so I just want to pray together. Here, a prayer from Thomas Cramner, uh, who was an Anglican theologian and uh, very influential in the history of that church. Uh, so here, pray with me. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever living God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin nor run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings would be ordered by thy governance to do always that which is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, amen. I, what I love about these prayers is that, you know, praying that God would keep us out of danger for me means, you know, please help my 16-year-old daughter who just learned how to drive <laughs> to keep her eyes on the road and for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine means a completely different thing. But the language is still uh, still relevant and truthful uh, either ways. Well, listen, I uh, am really thrilled to have uh, my good friends, Brett and Aaron Kunkel, on to lead us in this time, this week of, of guided prayer. Uh, Aaron needs no introduction because she has this super popular podcast uh, that she co-hosts along with my wife, uh, Sarah uh, called the uh, Strong Women Podcast. If you haven't started listening to that, even if you are uh, not a strong woman, but a man uh, who uh, believes in strong women, uh, you should you should check this out. Some unbelievable conversations about uh, God's good design uh, for women. Uh, she's a, a full-time stay-at-home homeschooling mom of five, bachelor's degree in sociology, emphasis in political science from Biola, uh, has served in a variety of leadership positions in the church uh, as well as in, in ministry. And uh, her and Brett live in Southern California. Of course, Brett is the founder and uh, president of Maven, uh, has worked with junior high and high school and college students uh, for a long time, both in the church and in the nonprofit space. He and I have done a lot of speaking and working together, uh, both at his conferences with Stand to Reason, with Summit Ministries, at the Colson Center, and everything else. Uh, we also co-authored that book, A Practical Guide to Culture, uh, which is uh, used in a lot of Christian schools, a lot of churches, and with a lot of families. So you can pick that up. Uh, Biola has degrees from Biola and Talbot School of Theology. So really thrilled to have these guys uh, as parents and as friends lead us in this time uh, of guided prayer. So Brett and Aaron, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, John. Uh, you know, we started Maven with a, a passion and a desire to equip and disciple the next generation to faithfully follow Jesus in our cultural uh, moment. And so we uh, are also passionate about parents mm -hmm. who are primarily the ones who are discipling the next generation. We do the uh, weekly Maven Parent Podcast. And really what we're trying to do there is to take uh, parenting and put it within the larger framework of the Christian worldview and let that guide how we think about parenting and all the issues surrounding parenting and um, you know just the, the, the practical steps we take. And so that's kind of the approach that we wanna take uh, right now is we wanna take prayer and the, particularly the prayer of parents, and put it within the larger framework of the Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. And so the Christian worldview starts with God. It starts with the fact that we are made by God. He is the creator. And, and one of his attributes that is so important when we consider prayer as parents is his sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And if we think about it, all right, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. I want to read what Paul writes here at the beginning of this book. He says, For by him all things were created 
in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. That is a clear uh, expression and description of the sovereignty of God, that, that everything holds together in him. And so, why do we pray? Uh, we, we pray because God is sovereign, and the very act of prayer is an admission that we are not sovereign, that ultimately we can't control the outcomes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, th I think the temptation in parenting to rely upon ourselves is probably greater because of the nature of our role uh, and, and the nature of the obligations that parents have to their kids. Yeah, I'm thinking about this idea of sovereignty that you're talking about, Brett. And I think as parents, although we can know that what you're saying is true, we can believe Colossians 1. The struggle is that we are on the ground, right, with the kids. We are raising them, disciplining them, discipling them. We're teaching them. And we're, we're teaching them all kinds of things, how to be responsible, how to work, how to earn a living, how to be on a sports team, how to follow Christ, how to be a good friend, um, how to proclaim the good news, how to love people, all these things. And so although we can know God is sovereign, the temptation is as parents, I think not only because of all the things we do and are instructed to do, but how our hearts attach so much to our kids, that the temptation is to depend on ourselves with our, when it comes to our kids. Yeah, and Scripture certainly lays out for us the roles that we play. I mean, mm -hmm. you think about Deuteronomy chapter 6, right, verses 4 uh, through 9, and it talks about um, the commandments and passing those commandments on to our kids when we sit down at home, when we walk along the road. Uh, it, it, and so we have a huge responsibility. We are the primary disciples of our kids. And yet, we don't determine the outcomes. We can't control the results. So it's, this, it's kind of this weird tension for us as parents. I um, mean, it's almost paradoxical. <laughs> God is sovereign yet he's entrusted us with such a huge task. And yet mm -hmm. at the same time, we don't control the outcomes. We don't uh, control the results. Um, but sometimes our efforts, uh, the things that we worry the most about in relation to our kids, reveals that maybe we hold on tighter to that control aspect uh, than is appropriate, Yeah. right? We, we sometimes, mm -hmm worry as parents about, uh, you know, everything, everything, yeah, <laughs> activities, yes. grades, mm -hmm. extracurricular sports, what college they're going to, uh, how are we preparing them for their, their best future? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You think about, well, I mean, what you said, we don't control the outcome can send again. We know that it's true, but that can send fear and trembling through the hearts of every parent listening, because we want, we want to have this guarantee that as Christians, we can raise our children to be Christians. And that if we put enough work into that, that wouldn't that just be the natural outcome? And can't we just dictate that enough so that we do come become consumed with this tension of I've got to get them in the best preschool because then this will line them up for the best elementary years, which then will line them up for the best time in high school and either academically or athletically or through the arts or whatever yeah. that will lead to college. And so we lose focus actually on what as parents really should be the most valuable thing. But it, it is this tension, right? That and, and that's why prayer as parents is so important because it is that daily reminder for ourselves that we are not sovereign, that he is. Yeah, and that's where we sometimes with our lips <laughs> will affirm that God is sovereign, but with our lives, we affirm that he's not. Yeah. And so again, stepping back, putting it into this larger biblical framework, it helps us to answer the question, why do we bring our requests to God? Why do we come to God in prayer? We, we come to God in prayer first 
because we acknowledge that he's the sovereign Lord over every aspect of creation, and we are not. And therefore, we need him and we need his work. But then secondly, in thinking of this in relation to our kids, the most important work in the lives of our kids is the work that only God's Spirit can do. What's the most important work in the lives of our kids? It, it doesn't actually have to do with all of these things that might be considered worldly successes, which aren't, in, are, aren't bad in and of themselves, but the most important work of the Spirit in the lives of our kids is their justification in Christ and their sanctification by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And this is where we, we need to constantly pull back and evaluate our current values in light of a biblical worldview. We, we have these Western values that can actually mitigate a life, uh, mitigate against a life of, of prayer, right? In, in the West, the good life is a successful life that brings you lots of pleasure. And so we can help them achieve that in our own strength, right? And so our prayers often will sound uh, very much like, hey, I, I'm, I'm focused on their prosperity. Hmm. I'm focused on their success. I'm focused on their achievement, which again, aren't wrong in and of themselves. Those mm -hmm. can be good things. But those aren't the most central things in the Christian life. What we focus on from a biblical worldview is not just their success, but who are they becoming? Primarily, what is uh, their growth in virtue like? What's their growth in their character? And this is where prayer uh, can be very helpful mm -hmm. uh, in, in helping us to acknowledge what are the most important things. Yeah, like it's you you mentioned earlier, we we say with our lips what what is true and that that's helpful. And that's why I appreciate the guided prayer that Colson Center is offering to us this month through Lent. Because I know as a mom, I've been a mom now for 27 years, and there have been so many mornings that I wake up not sure how to pray for my kids. And I, I don't know if any parents listening relate to that. Sometimes we wake up, we're so overwhelmed by the daily, by the changing diapers, taking to practice, all the mundane things that we have to do, that sometimes in the morning I sit down and I'm not, I don't even know where, where do I start, Lord? How do I pray? How do I surrender and lift up my kids to you. So one thing that's been so helpful for me through the years is reading through Psalms, reading through the Book of Common Prayers, prayers that have been written long ago by Christians long ago, um, reading through a, a prayer guide I got years ago that every day of the month is just a virtue that we can pray for our children. So the virtue of courage, of love, of honesty, of integrity. And so for me, that has been helpful to guide my heart to truth when my mind and spirit are kind of lost in this wrestling as a parent of how, how do I love my kids best? What, what, do I, what am I in charge of as a mom to do? And Lord, how do I every day recognize your sovereignty and recognize that you actually know the good of our kids better than we do. Yeah. And, you know, by now we should know that being raised in a Christian home, e even a good Christian home, mm -hmm. uh, does not guarantee that our kids will put their faith in Christ. That is a deep work of the Spirit that needs to happen. And so we are faithful to disciple them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also know that their, their submi submission, their faith in Christ is a work that the Spirit needs to do. And then their sanctification, the mm -hmm. resulting sanctification, that's a work of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. Mm -hmm. We pray. Yeah, and actually, it, as we were talking about doing this together, and, and of course, we talk about this a lot on the Maven Parent Podcast of what are we to do as parents and what, what is God to do? What's our job? What's God's job? And I thought about this story of John Newton. And John Newton, of course, most of us know who he is. He's the author of the great hymn, Amazing Grace. And But if you don't know his story, he grew up with a Christian mother, but she died when he was only seven. And so he was raised by a merchant ship father and ended up having just a life on the sea, basically, and got swept up in the slave trade 
And his moment of coming to faith on the deck of a slave ship, um, he called out to God and, and met God there. And he shares this story later on about his mother. And so I thought I would just read his quote um, to give encouragement to us parents. But Newton reflected later on saying, my mother stored my memory, which was then very retentive, talking about when he was a little boy, with many valuable pieces, chapters, portions of scripture, catechisms, hymns, and poems. When the Lord at length opened my eyes, I found great benefit from the recollections of them. So recognizing all that you just said, the, the Lord, it's the Lord's work to sanctify and awaken our child's hearts to his spirit. But his mom did this important work of, of what work to do, to be faithful, to pray, to teach, to instruct our children, um, but to leave leave the results to the, to him. Yeah, and that I mean that that kind of t- reminds us. I mean, of a, a real personal story about our own daughter. Yeah, uh, that was very instructive uh, for us in, along these lines of the kinds mm-hmm. of things that we as parents need to be praying for our well, kids. Yeah, I, I mean, having five children who um, at the current time are age twenty seven to ten. Um, we have obviously gone through some ups and downs with our kids. And there was a time about four years ago where our oldest daughter was um, pregnant with our first granddaughter and she developed preeclampsia and she had to go into the hospital. Her heart was in a really bad shape and already, and they were going to have to deliver the baby quite early at 32 weeks. And we had gotten some bad news um, the night before that her heart really had had some damage and it could be life, lifelong damage. And that next morning I woke up really early. I was having a hard time sleeping and I was going to head back to the hospital. Her husband was staying with her there, so I would go home at night. But this particular morning I was crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, heal her heart. Take this away let her keep the baby longer in her tummy, let her grow healthy and not have to. And I'm, at, I'm just pouring my heart out, asking God to take this from her. And then that morning, I happened to be reading in Romans 5. I was reading through the book, and I happened to be on chapter 5. And in that chapter 5, Paul starts by saying that we are justified by faith. And, and then in verse 2, He says, and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. And then verse 3 says, and not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who who was given to us. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit reminded me, this is what I have been praying for, not only that daughter, but all my kids, for perseverance, for character, for finding their hope in Christ. And so in that moment of prayer and reflection, I realized that God might be saying no that all those things I had poured out, he was saying, no, this might be good for our daughter to go through. Because if it brought about these things that I had been praying for her since she was little, then maybe this suffering and trial would be good. And, and this can only happen through prayer. This is, this is what can happen. God can change our hearts and turn it towards his. And so um, maybe we'll, we'll end with, Sorry, well, did I you think, want to say something yeah, else? Yeah, just to wrap this up, I think, um, you know, prayer is very anti-American in the sense that <laughs> it's not efficient. It doesn't produce maybe the results we want or we hope for in that moment. <laughs> and with our kids, that's difficult. Uh, and so I think it's appropriate to, to read Psalm 5, verses 1 through 3. Paul, or, uh, David is talking about uh, prayer, and he says this in verse 1, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. 
And then verse three, he says this, O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. And I think those last two words are so key. I pray, I, I, I call out, you know, as a parent to the Lord, but then a lot of it is sitting back and then watching and trusting that mm -hmm. the Lord is going to um, do his work and his will uh, in our kids as he sees fit because mm -hmm. he's a sovereign Lord over all. And so with that, let, uh, let's let that direct our prayers as parents. So let me close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we approach you, we approach um, your throne, your authority, because you are the sovereign Lord over all creation, and we give you praise. And right now, Father, we ask that you would help us as parents to come <clears throat> to a deeper uh, and more profound understanding of who you are and also who we are in light of that. And that, Lord, uh, through our knowledge of you, your authority, your, your control, uh, your will, that that would lead us more and more to pray for our kids as, as their parents, Lord. Help us to trust you that you are also not only a sovereign God, but you are a God of love and that you love our kids uh, much more than we can even imagine. And so, Father, help us as parents direct our hearts and our minds to your character so that we will understand prayer more and that we will then come to you. We will, we will be motivated uh, and compelled to come to you in prayer, praying for the children that you've entrusted us with. And we pray all these things in your son's name and authority. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, Brett and Aaron. Uh, I usually come on and have a couple questions. You guys covered so many bases. Really, my only question is, um, I just want to confirm with everyone that, uh, that you are indeed grandparents. I just think that's an important thing to point out. <laughs> Uh, no one would believe that of Aaron. <laughs> Pretty much everyone would believe it of Brett. But uh, just want to, just want to. Can you guys yeah. just confirm that rumor? It, I can sure confirm there it one. for did Aaron. Did we hear that right? I can <laughs> yeah. confirm it for Aaron. He, he <laughs> loves to tell people, "Hey, did you know she's a grandma?" And he he yeah. loves to tell people that. He forgets to add that he's also a grandpa. But. Yes, but we're, we're it brand is new true. at that, and we do not pretend that we have any advice on how to do no, that. No, we have no. We need advice to do that. on grandparenting. <laughs> well, you know what I love uh, this uh, these prayer guides uh, that our friend Tony Souter, who was who led us last week through this time of guided prayer. Um, there's one for parents with their children, grandparents with their grandchildren, mm -hmm. and then adults with the youth in their church. And so that's the idea: is that any of these should be able to hit just about every. Um, uh, generation gap that you personally experience in your own life. I think generation gaps are a huge feature of modern life, particularly church life. So uh, these prayer guides are just really terrific. Uh, yeah, and you can I find love, those. We'll put the link. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I love that it's to pray together too. And we, we didn't mention yeah. that. We could have talked even more about praying together, letting our kids hear and our grandkids hear what we're praying, not only for ourselves, and for our country and our community, but what we pray for them and letting them yeah. hear us pray that. And that's definitely something we've done as a fan. We're at our kitchen table right now. This kitchen table has had many prayers, you know, at it and our kids just hearing how we pray for them. And so I love that the prayer guides are to encourage us to do it together as a family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really good. Well, good. Well, listen, uh, I'm going to invite our good friend Josh Bales uh, again here in just a minute to come and close our time of guided prayer together. Again, thanks to Brett and Aaron. Uh, if folks want to find out more about Maven, uh, give them all the places they can find out more about Maven, Brett. You can go to our website at maventruth.com and that will connect you uh, to kind of the Maven world. We have a YouTube channel where we post video of our weekly podcasts. Uh, you can find us on different podcast platforms. And uh, but go to maventruth.com and you'll find all the information there.
Okay, well, before Josh comes, another prayer from uh, Thomas Cramner. Oh God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give to thy servants that peace which the world cannot give. And uh, that's especially a good prayer for many parents right now, Mm -hmm. that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandment and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies can pass our time and rest in quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Together we say, amen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Maven exists to help the next generation know truth, pursue goodness, and create beauty for the cause of Christ. To find out more, check out maventruth.com.